Hello everyone, welcome to this bonus episode in which we'll be looking at uh, creating this cool little effect where we only render what is within the character's field of view. So this effect can be quite easily achieved through the use of a stencil shader. Uh, I should probably mention that I am very much not a shader expert, so don't take anything I might say regarding them as gospel, but uh, I'll certainly do my best to be accurate. Okay, so here in Unity, let's create a shader folder. And I'm just going to create two new shaders. So we can just say standard surface shader. I'll call this one my stencil mask. And then we can create another and call this the stencil object. So the stencil mask uh, shader will be applied to our actual view mesh and it will mask out everything that has the stencil object shader applied. So let's open up stencil mask. And the first thing that we'll want to do is just to ensure that whatever mesh has this uh, shader applied will be rendered before any other geometry in the scene. Because of course, if an object is rendered before the mask, then the mask won't actually apply to it. So we can do this by going into this tag section over here and we'll just say Q equals geometry minus 100, the minus 100 uh, indicating that it's rendered before all other geometry. Now we don't actually want this mesh to be drawn into the scene because it is now functioning purely as a mask. So we can prevent the shader from writing to the color channels by just saying color mask zero. Then we also want to stop the shader from writing to the depth buffer, otherwise objects behind the mask won't be rendered, which of course is the opposite to what we want. So we can say Z right off. All right, let's go down here and start our stencil block. So we can start off by saying ref1, which is just specifying that the value that we're going to be writing to the stencil buffer is one. It doesn't really matter what value we actually use, as long as we remember to use the same one when we're writing the stencil object shader. All right, so then all that we have to do now is say when this shader passes, we want to replace all values in the stencil buffer with our new reference value. Okay, so we can save that. That is the mask shader complete. Now let's go in and open up the stencil object shader. And once again, we'll want to make a stencil block here and we'll say ref1 once again. And then this time, all we want to do is say comp equal. So each vertex will only be rendered if its reference value is equal to the value in the stencil buffer, which will only occur if it is actually underneath the stencil mask mesh. So let's save that and let's hop over to our materials folder. Just select the ground obstacle and target materials and change their shader to our custom uh, stencil object shader. Those will promptly disappear. Let's now set the view visualization material to the stencil mask. So I'd like to be able to see things when we're in, uh, in our scene view at least. So let's create a plane and we can just apply the uh, view material to that. So you can see that uh, everything, everything behind that is being rendered. Um, let's just scale this out so that it encompasses our entire scene. And I'm just also going to place this so that it's above the, uh, above the game camera, so that it's not actually affecting my game render. Um, I could also just write a script, I guess, to disable it as soon as we enter game mode. Might be a cleaner way to do it. But uh, anyway, I'll call this the scene view mask, perhaps. Uh, it'll be a bit irritating if we keep trying to select things and we just keep clicking accidentally on the scene view mask. So let's create a new layer. I uh, call this something like unselectable. All right, add that layer to it. And then over here in our little layers drop down, we can just lock the unselectable layer. So now we can no longer actually select it in the scene view. So that's nice. Um, I'm just going to scale out this ground plane. Let's also go into the main camera and just uh, change the color from skybox to a solid black. So now I'm just quickly going to go into the character. I'll maybe uh, 
increase the mesh resolution to say 3 and let's see I'll set my view angle to 90 and let's just make this view radius really big all right and press play so as you can see this is actually working we can run around and yeah it's masking everything out very nicely uh, one little thing that we might want is uh, just to have the sort of edges of the of the obstacles rendered so that we can actually see a bit of their color uh, so let's just quickly go into the field of view script and let's make a little public uh, float call this something like I don't know maybe mask cutaway distance if that makes any sense so I'll set that equal to let's try 0.1 then uh, down here where we're setting our vertices equal to the viewpoint position we can just add vector3.forward multiplied by that uh, mask cutaway distance so now if we play we should see a tiny slither maybe a little bit too tiny um, just go into the character change that up to Let's try 0.15. Yeah, so that looks very nice. Um, all right, well, that is everything for this episode. Hope you enjoyed. And to all of you watching this as it comes out, Happy New Year. Until 2016, farewell.